A research vessel plies the open waters of the Pacific Ocean. A plane flies across the coastal range to the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. Both will provide climate scientists at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory a better understanding of how regional precipitation is affected by the atmospheric rivers and influenced by tiny aerosol particles in the atmosphere. Atmospheric rivers are narrow bands of moisture in the atmosphere. They form far out in the Pacific Ocean when cold fronts collide with warm, moist tropical air. That moisture flows ahead of cold fronts, coming ashore an average of just six times a year during the winter. But the precipitation accounts for 30 to 40 percent of annual total rainfall in parts of the western U.S. When it hits the mountain, extract all the moisture, and that's where the heavy precipitation comes from. But the most significant is that it really creates a huge amount of precipitation. In fact, most of the flooding events in California and a lot of the flooding events in Oregon and Washington come from atmospheric rivers. PNNL scientists will lead an upcoming field campaign to study these atmospheric rivers with funding from the Department of Energy's Atmospheric Radiation Measurement Climate Research Facility. The Cloud Aerosol Precipitation Experiment, or ACAPEX, will give climate scientists more data about where the moisture comes from and how it moves to improve climate models for predicting heavy precipitation and water supply. There have been indications that uh, in the future when the climate becomes warmer, then we would expect more moisture coming from the ocean surface. And therefore, when this kind of situation comes, when it taps the, the moisture from the tropics, it could be that we would have much stronger atmospheric rivers and producing more or heavier precipitation. So that also kind of motivates us to better understand what is going on with this kind of process. During the field campaign, scientists will rely on a research ship equipped with a vast array of state-of-the-art remote sensing instruments, such as scanning cloud radars, ARMS Aerial Facility, the PNNL Gulfstream 1 aircraft, also will be loaded with the latest in-situ instruments for cloud and aerosol measurements. Some instruments will measure and characterize tiny atmospheric particles called aerosols, which can consist of dust and other tiny particles from natural or human causes, such as exhaust from tailpipes, coal power plants, and burning other fossil or biofuels. These aerosols interact with clouds and can change the amount and form of precipitation. For instance, dust particles serve to create ice crystals, which can precipitate as snow. Other aerosols tend to form tiny cloud drops and reduce rainfall. Uh, we rely on snowpack in the mountain to give us the water supply during summertime. So if more of the precipitation comes as rain rather than snow, it's not that helpful. <laughs> so, so that's also another reason why we study um, uh, in this field campaign is to understand where the aerosols are coming from. How much of that actually cross over the Pacific Ocean coming from far away? And how do they actually interact with the clouds and change precipitation amount. Atmospheric rivers affect snowpack too, since they cause rainfall in winter. Atmospheric rivers and aerosol particles will be characterized from data gathered at sea and in the air. Then we use those measurements and compare with our model, give us better idea whether the model is actually doing something right or not, and if it is not, why, why is that and how do we improve the models to do a better job? So, so there's a lot of work after the field campaign. The ACAPEX field campaign will begin in late 2014 with data collection scheduled to continue through April of 2015. The results will help PNNL and other researchers expand knowledge of fundamental atmospheric processes, further develop modeling capabilities, and improve understanding of how climate, energy, water, and land systems interact.